Digital payments are increasing by 13% year on year, and it's expected that by 2022, I think, there will be 60% of the world's GDP will be by digital payment. The premise of this work is that a few years ago we had about 2.5 billion adults who were not banked, and about 1.7 billion out of those uh, that had a mobile phone. And we started working with our partners to close that gap and try to use those um, mobile phones to provide financial inclusion. In forums like the ITU, uh, the security clinics that we're here for this week, where we can bring together the ICT practitioners, the telcos, um, the technologists that are working on the tools to help to mitigate the risks, but also the financial services regulators um, and others that are really looking at the rules that are governing access can come together and, and find uh, that common ground. We are building a um uh, cybersecurity risk management framework, uh, which fits into the paradigm of the security clinic that we uh, we are for. We do a lot of blockchain work, uh, DLT, whatever you want to call it. So there's a lot of parallels, a lot of synergies, and um, so bring the expertise that we that we gather at, uh, at Columbia and bring it here, and take what we pick up here and bring it back. So it's the, the synergies and the interactions are are very valuable and very worthwhile and very welcome. If we want to do a large-scale digital transformation, including the banking transactions, then we need to ensure that we preserve the integrity of these transactions by ensuring people that they can do uh, you know, digital transactions with confidence and with convenience and with minimal cost. The security risk is not only the concern of the bank or of the uh, DFS provider. It also concerns all the other players that are involved in the industry in uh, providing uh, the service. So, as you know, security is only as strong as the weakest link in the chain. I think to me it's going to be really important to understand the technology, you know, to really understand the technology, what it means to uh, create a private network on a blockchain, what it means to create a public network on a blockchain, and really get an understanding of uh, uh, where we stand in terms of governance, what are the best practices, and uh, how data can be protected. There is a recognition that uh, the, the, the DFS is a uniquely um, challenging type of uh, uh, data because of the fact that we're dealing with money and uh, so much trust relies on um, the safe handling of that data that it's really in everybody's best interest from the DFS provider to the application uh, developer through the mobile provider to really provide the most secure experience in order to keep uh, um, the usability and the security of the uh, system high for users. So I think that that message is, 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 is becoming increasingly clear. Decentralized architecture is really, uh, you know, from, from it really part of the basis of, of all of these. And so the idea um, that my consent is built into the exchange of it, I think it's going to fit very well with privacy regula regulatory frameworks like GDPR. Um, I think that that's basically what we need to help avoid the um, need to opt in, opt out, or, or rather there's probably going to emerge over time better ways to um, capture that as a first class notion and not rely on companies to um, you know, do the right thing. They, they have to do the right thing. Standardization is key. Also recommendation is key working with the regulators in order to implement recommendations on how to structure networks in more secure fashion. Every phone you will have in the is fiber enabled. Every browser that you will be fiber enabled. You cannot plan to adopt this technology in a few years. You have to start today. Because every year, every new edition, the compatible open the box support for it is coming in. And users will love it because you know you could uh, you trouble the user once, and after that, once you have the relationship, you build on the trusted anchor of relationship. The regulators are actually finding it sometimes very hard to gra grapple with this new reality, and and therefore it is important for them to have uh, the the expertise and knowledge, and and get the best out of all those experts uh, to to remain ahead of the curve. If the consumer or the user trusts that this new device and new solution um, will provide them the, uh, the service that they want with the security and the privacy aspects and that they're not going to lose their money, um, then people will use it more and more.